Right, we are on another installment of Let's Talk Business, and right now we have Dr. Kevin Kinney, chiropractor, culture chiropractic, and wellness man. How's it going? Good man, how's it going? Glad to be here. Good man, we got glad we could get you in on a little bit of short notice, but we got you in here, so we're happy to do that. Of course, man. Anything for the gang, man. Yes, sir. So, um, well, we kind of want to, we kind of just want to go through a few things with you today, and kind of let people know who Kevin Kinney is, what uh, what got him excited about being a chiropractor and wanting to go into that field and, uh, and kind of, we'll just, we'll go off from there okay. and, uh, and see where it takes us. Sounds good. Let's roll. All right. So first things first, um, what kind of made you want to be a chiropractor? Like, was it something in, in high school that piqued your interest or was it, wh- when did it, when did that start for you? Uh, super random, man. Honestly, I had actually never been to a chiropractor before, never been adjusted, didn't know anything about it in high school in undergrad, any of that. So in school, graduated, and I was actually teaching at an elementary school. So I was teaching. I was a PE coach for about two years. At that time, my roommates were in law school. So we live in downtown Orlando, nice fly apartment. Everything was sweet. But I was like, man, they finna be lawyers. I'm a teacher. I got to give me some more money. Yeah. So I started, you know, naturally looking into different things. And somehow stumbled upon this school outside of Atlanta that was a chiropractic school. Had no idea what chiropractic was. Had never been adjusted, like I said. Ended up going and visiting the school for a weekend. Yep. Uh, really, it was just to get up to Atlanta and party and hang out with my friends. Right. <laughs> but while I was there in the midst of that, um, I actually learned what chiropractic was. Um, no drugs, no surgery. And I learned how the body actually works. You know, that is uh, self-healing and self-maintaining. Okay. So, you know, once I learned that and then I actually got into the thing and started seeing that, oh, this stuff actually works. I was pretty much so. And it's something that matched you. Like you felt like it was a match. Absolutely. I I connected right to it. I kind of knew I wanted to do something in the health, you know, health field wellness, but uh, I hadn't quite committed to anything. But when I found chiropractic, it definitely spoke to me. Understood. That's awesome, man. That's great. Um, All right. So as far as education, so, you went to your first school was was uh, what your first college was? I went to uh, UCF, University of Central Florida, okay, in and Orlando, Florida. Um, what did you major in there? Health sciences. Okay, I was a health science major. Uh, really, is a entry level degree, so you can't do much with that once you graduate, but go to grad school. Right. Um, hence, why I was teaching and just trying to figure things out after that. Understood. Okay. So then, from there, okay. So then, fast forward, we saw life in, uh, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what were some of the education requirements that you knew that you had to kind of complete at life and, and what, what goes into that as far as chiropractic? Absolutely. Well, you wanted to obviously have your undergrad and those kind of requirements completed before you actually enter the program. Right. But once you get into the program, it's uh, right about four years. So same amount of time as a medical school program, but the only difference being that we do our externship during, during school. Right. So the last th- two and a half years of school, we're actually seeing patients starting with students and working our way up to the community and then in outside clinics. But yeah, it's a four year process. Um, a lot of hours. Yeah. A lot of hours. Wow. Okay. So you actually start being a chiropractor before you even graduate. Absolutely. They get, get you, they get you started pretty early. Yeah. Um, because it's a hands on profession. Sure. Um, we pretty much Played a lot of our time in the books and, you know, hands-on, learning different techniques and, and uh, just how to work with the body. Awesome. That's great. So a little bit about the education side of it. All right. So um, from there in, in, at life, so do they say, okay, do they teach you kind of the business of being, of being a chiropractor? You're kind of like, all right, you graduated, you're a chiropractor. Now what's next? Is it placement? Is it like, what, what does that look like? Now what's next? That's the question. So when I was in school, I like to work with a lot of younger students to kind of help just figure out purpose and and the why and where you want to be after you graduate. So that's what I tell a lot of the students that I work with. You kind of want to have an idea because school doesn't teach you business. It's chiropractic school. It's not business school. Right. So graduating, you want to graduate with the plan because if you walk across the stage, now you're just an unemployed chiropractor. <laughs> so yeah. you definitely want to kind of know what you want to do and how you want to practice before you actually get to that point. Okay. Yeah. So something to start thinking about while you're in school. Definitely, definitely yeah. while you're in school. If you if you don't know what you're going to do, then you're wasting a lot of money. Were those conver- was those, were those conversations that were had between like other people in the program and stuff like that? Y'all kind of already knew like Absolutely. Yeah. Um it's important to have, you know, your peer group and your circle and your people that you can lean on. Um 
some of my closest friends I made in that program. And yeah, we figured out, hey, you want to go do this? And eh, that ain't really what I want to do. I'm going to try this and, you know, and see what works. Yeah. You know, and okay. sh- share notes and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Um, all right. So what are some of the, uh, the startup costs in being a chiropractor? Just off the bat. Well, honestly, that's the beautiful thing about chiropractic. Honestly, the only thing you really need are your, your hands, maybe a table, um, and then obviously, if you want to have an office, a staff, you know, rent over those are different overhead prices. But um, honestly, when you first graduate, if you want to go out there and get a table and do in-home visits, then you don't have an office space. Yeah, that's an option. Um, if you want to find uh, take out loans and find investors and open up a brick and mortar practice, that's an office. Yeah. I mean, an option. Um, or you could go out and work for somebody else. You know, you have options. It's really about finding what connects with you and what you really want to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this might be a kind of something that just came to me now. So I know a lot of the times I've been to different chiropractors and they would say, um, well, we don't take that kind of insurance or we don't, we mm-hmm. don't take that. So is it, um, but I do know that there, in some cases they, they will do, they will take the insurance. So kind of how, I guess how what for people who don't really know what 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 part of that how does that work? Really? Um, so that really depends on the practice, right? Yeah. So in my private practice, I don't take insurance currently. Right. So it's a cash practice. You pay for the care that you want. Right. Um, I think a lot of times, uh, <laughs> a lot of times people get lazy. You yeah. Know? We'll pay for sneakers. We'll pay for jewelry. We'll yeah. pay for our hair, but we want somebody else to pay for our health. Right. You know. So it's oh, do you take insurance? Do you? Right. But um, so it depends on the office. Different offices have, you know, different. They're in plan with different or in network with different uh, insurance companies. You have a lot of offices that just take cash, though. Yeah, like myself. So that's a great point, though, that you made. Like, we'll go, we'll we'll go buy like shoes. We'll go buy all this crap that like mm-hmm. nobody got to pull our arm to do, right? But when it comes to like our health and and, and our and wellness, you, we'll kind of and pick you and know choose. that you're feeling bad. Yeah. And you know, you know that you don't feel good. Yeah. But it's like um, we get so used to just. Being blah, yeah, you know, and, and that's where mediocrity it. kind of sets in. Priorities, absolutely, yeah, understood. Okay, so um, in what scenario? So you mentioned um, after school, the the scenario of okay, you get your table and you go and you go and you know you start doing in home visits, you start networking, mm-hmm. or um, you open your own practice, or you go and work under somebody else. Mm-hmm. How do you really know? Is does it just the person, or how do you really know what? what you want to do and kind of what comes with that, what, what you should do? Um, I think it's really up to the individual, especially being, you know, going on six years in practice now and seeing different people. There's some people who just don't want to run their own practice. Yeah. There's some people who would don't want to be in the office with anybody else, right. you know, so it kind of depends on the individual. And so once again, while you're in school, figuring out how do you want to practice, where do you want to be, those kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's more of a business side to it than probably being a traditional doctor, right? A traditional doctor's office because they have assistants and they're maybe they're part of some big network, yeah. right? Yep. Um, as to where this is really, it really is a business. It really is something that you do have to market. You do have to make those, those connections with. Um, okay. So good to know. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing, um, marketing, 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 Yeah. especially if you're going to be in practice for yourself, figure it out early. Once again, I was building my, social media and my presence while I was still in school, yep. you know, and my network at that, you know, people who, that I was going to work with in practice, I was connected with them while I was still in school or beforehand. So Right. So kind of getting ahead of it. Got to be ahead of it. Be proactive. That's great. That's great. Okay. So um, let's see, talk about, talk about some of the people. Um, so when I've looked on your social media, man, I'm seeing different these different celebrities, and I'm like, oh crap, Kevin's adjusting Ti, or he's adjusting uh, Ti's kids, or, yep. or or different, you know, different celebrities that we see come in. And it, it was that a benefit of of being in Atlanta, being in the hub, and kind of just um, well, just it, talk it was, about that a little bit. I think that's the, that's a fun part of it too. Yeah, this is definitely fun, and honestly, it's um, what we keep talking about putting those planting those seeds early. So my background is in entertainment. So since we were in high school. I've worked with DJs, promoters, artists, et cetera. And so a lot of the people and places that I've been have come from those early seeds. I've been on tours with Wild and Out, working with, you know, those various cast members. Yeah. You know, you mentioned T.I., his son, Damani, you know, hell shit. All of his kids, were, really. Were you on tour? So you were on tour with Wild and Out, like, 
a Justin and and or, no, or, or, or what, what was, was on, what was that? I was on tour with Wild and Out Hustling. Hustling, okay. Hustling. Okay. Once again, I had a connection. Yeah. Their DJ. Yeah. I used to manage. Okay. So now I'm going on the road with him, picking up these connections and working with different artists and different famous people. I wasn't contracted. Yeah. But I put my I made myself available. Right. You know, and once again, you just got to take advantage of whatever opportunities kind of come. I think that's a big part of like maybe not even chiropractic or anything that you do, but like that's just kind Life. of a principle, right? Yeah. Um, you got to take the opportunities. You got to make yourself available. Go after what you want. Um, and you weren't you weren't afraid to go on tour and leave and leave what you had going on to go. Hey, I'll be go. back in three weeks <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I'm go, I'm about to run through a couple of cities in Florida, you know, and yeah, and it worked. I was able to travel with them and also set up my own patients outside of that group, you know, via social media. So, hey, I'm coming to your town, book your session. So, you know, just doing different things and trying different things early to really get out there. Um, and also being in Atlanta helps. You know, you have different athletes, um, professional athletes that come through, celebrities. Um, you know, I've worked with Queen Nyjah, yep. um, Slim Jimmy from Ray Schremer, uh, professional athletes, like I said, just a number of people. And – the beautiful thing about it is they're all people. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they just all, we just all want to feel good and live our best life. So. Yeah. And th- would you say that a lot of, uh, a lot of entertainers, they do, they do have a chiropractor an adjuster or somebody that they, do they see the benefit of it? Cause I'm, I know everything that they're doing, like they're, they live an active lifestyle. Absolutely. You would think that they would need a chiropractor or somebody. Um, it, it depends on the demographic, right? Right. A lot of, um, us don't necessarily know the benefits of chiropractic and know about chiropractic. I didn't know about it until I actually visited the university that I went to. Right. Um, but, you know, once you get to different levels of income, absolutely people start taking better care of themselves. Um, it would really depend on what demographic we were talking about. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So do you feel like um, it was part, part was part of it chiropractic or part was part of it education about, hey, this can help you with this. Absolutely. You know, okay. Absolutely. Because especially talking about some of these people that we're talking about, right. they're not just going to let anybody put their hands on them, you know. So you got to, you know, educate them, let them know what's going on, how this can benefit you, you know, what we're actually doing, we're not just cracking bones. Yeah. Know, so. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So um, next thing we'll hop into um, is we'll talk about uh, care, right? So the big, this is the, what it's about, right? It's right. about care. It's about taking care of uh, your patients. And uh, and so what's the, what's the importance of, uh, having having your regular chiropractic visits and uh, and taking care of yourself and and what what are the most some of the most common things that you see like um, with what you do? So the most common things that I see I see headaches. You know I've had patients who've had headaches for years and years and once they got under consistent care, the headaches alleviated. Uh, chronic neck pain, back pain, um, muscle aches, tightness, all of these different things. Because if you think about the body and how it works. You can get a massage and that's fine. It'll relax the muscles and that's great. And muscle work is great. But what actually controls the muscles is the nerves. So if you get the muscles all relaxed, but the nerves that control them are overstimulated, then those muscles are going to fire and be stiff and tight and just in dysfunction. So what we do is we actually work with the nervous system to reset the tone of the whole body. So whether it's headaches, sleeping issues, shoulder pain, back pain, neck pain, all of these things kind of have a root cause in the nervous system. Okay. So taking that approach and really breaking that down to people and letting them understand that uh, you don't have a headache because you're missing Tylenol. You have a headache because something is off inside of you. Right. It might be an adjustment. It might be dehydration, but your body is smart, right? And so really breaking that down and letting people understand the power that they have without needing all of these outside sources. Because when I put, do my adjustment, I don't fix you or heal you. I do that so that your body can integrate it and do what it needs to do. Maintenance. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I've had my, I've had an adjustment before and they adjusted me and I felt like some fluid. Like you hear like, what, what is, what is that? <laughs> so is that, I'm sure other people have had that before, but absolutely like, the pops, right? Like, the pops yeah. and the, the cracks, that yeah. kind of stuff. So it's literally gas bubbles. So in your joints, you have fluid, you know, to stay hydrated yep. and you have gas. So that gas that you hear when you pop your knuckle, is bubbles actually popping, you know? So it takes about 10 minutes or so for those bubbles and those gas to regenerate in the joint before you can pop it again. But also a lot of times you'll hear like snapping and popping when you move around or you stand up quick or your knee pops. Yeah, That's when the uh, tight muscles are sliding and popping between bones and other tendons. 
So there's a comp, you know, there's different things going on there, but a lot of times it's just gas or tight muscles. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. I've I've always wanted to know. I'm like, yo, what is that? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right. So kind of uh, lastly, um, where can people find you? Um, how do they book a session with you? Kind of where? How can they connect with you? Absolutely. Uh, Doctor Kevin Kenny on all socials. That's Kenny K I N N E Y. My website drkevinkenny.com. Facebook, Instagram, and my booking link is on all of those. So, awesome. Yeah, pretty easy to find. Okay, awesome. And then um, what's one thing that you would tell, um, one piece of advice you would give um, to a young young person wanting to step into the field that you're going in and um, just from watching you, they've been interested. Like what's one piece of advice just through everything that you've kind of up to this point? I know that's probably hard, but what's one piece of advice you would give? The biggest piece of advice be, would be to find your why and your purpose, because that's going to keep you moving through, through you know, even those days where you don't know what you're going to do or where your patients are going to come from. If you know why you're doing what you're doing, it'll always kind of make sense and give you that drive to get out and go get it. Um, for me, and that's patient care, like seeing my patients actually get better and yeah. these results. It's like, oh, shit, this, this shit really works. Let yeah. me go do some more of this. Let me get yeah. bring this to some more people. Yeah. So, you know, tapping in and finding your why, and it's got to be bigger than you, you know, because you'll let yourself down. But once you have something outside of yourself to kind of work for, that'll really keep you keep you moving. man. Understood, man. This has been awesome, man. I appreciate it so much for coming through. Absolutely. Um, and we've been talking business, man. We've been talking business. We've been talking uh, chiropractic. We've been talking mindset, man. And without even really knowing it, we're talking about mindset. So Absolutely. Um, really appreciate you for stopping by. And uh, Dr. Kevin Kenny, everybody. Appreciate Thanks. it. Shout out to the to the Let's Talk Business podcast. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. We out. Awesome, man. Ooh, my foot was just falling asleep, too.